Welcome to the highlight show for Group 9 of the Ultimate Pool Champions League. Shane Thompson, the four-time Ultimate Pool Champion, will be the favourite and top seed for this group. But he has a challenge up against Dylan Leary, Jimmy Croxton and Andy Williams. Let's get straight into our first match and it is Shane Thompson, the top seed, taking on Andy Williams. The first three frames went with the break and Andy has the break at 2-1 behind. Steven Jameson joins myself, Simon Webb, on commentary. What impressed me the most as we see this dry break from Andy, that's unlucky because he's hit that really, really well. But what really impressed me with Shane was all season long, where the results weren't quite going his way, he, he was very, he played it down really, really well. He, he sort of said to himself, look, you know, I'm playing some good pool. I'm still getting good results. I'm not going to match what I did last year, barring something, you know, miraculous, you know, three titles in a season. So he sort of just packed himself and he just hung in there and he got his rewards in the very last tournament of the season but he, he never got down on himself when the results weren't quite there and ironically he'd probably tell you that that tournament win was probably one of his worst overall tournament performances strangely he felt like he really battled that weekend he was using a new cue which he's still using at this point so he was very much getting used to it didn't set himself high expectations for that weekend, and wouldn't you just know it? That was the one where he took down his only title of the season. His first shot's not quite gone to plan here. He wanted that red to get it out of the way of the centre pocket, and it hasn't. It was going to make the finish very challenging. Won't get very far into it anyway. Hasn't left a good leave, though, for, for Andy. Andy will be pleased to get to the table, but... Nothing inviting here. Yeah, it may just be a simple loss of turn shot here. You have to oh, you've got to miss it, though. You, you've won Sorry, you've got to hit it, though. My apologies. The problem he had there, if he guaranteed making the loss of turn, the cue ball hits the red that's left near the brake line now, and he leaves shots on for Shane. And he's, the loss of turn does him no favours. He still gives Shane a great chance to finish, so he had to get the cue ball right as well, which meant getting very close to that red and... In focusing on that, he misses the, the combination part of it and over the Shane. And that's not the best. Yeah, hasn't got his pace quite right there. Digging a bit here is Shane. Yeah, if that yellow goes right centre, it really helps him. If it just squeezes past the red, it makes a massive difference because he can drop it in and hold for the opposite centre. If he has to take this one long, even if it's a slight angle to play on the other yellow, when playing on the other yellow down the cushion, it, it's getting position off that is so tough. Yeah, the position from here is, is really, really tough. He had to get past the straight. So he needed to be a ball further right, but he didn't have the angle to get there. And he queuing over the red, he couldn't manipulate it. So what's he got for us here? Yeah, this needs to be a very good shot. Top it down for very short position. Don't know if he's got an angle to get across. No, he definitely hasn't. Well, pick your poison. Both yellows are not nice. This is just a safety. He's going to pull back. He's left a shot on. Not an easy one, mines. And the shot that he's left on, left centre of the clip in there, he is going to be leaving a yellow to the bottom end of the table. If he takes it on and misses, there'll be a shot on for Shane. So this is dangerous. 15-second shot clock now in play as well. Players play on 30 up until the five-minute mark. I like the idea of the option there, but not executed very well. And he's left Shane just in pretty much ball in hand where he'd want to be, to be honest. Just enough angle, I think. If he's dead straight, he's going to have a problem. But yeah, just enough angle to come across. So this is still a delicate shot, but... Looks 
Looks like he's playing the long double, the way he lined that up. I thought he yeah, might go for a is. delicate drop in the middle. Well, it was tough in the middle. Unless you get right behind it, it was very, very tough in the middle. Let's, you know, make it out to be any easier than that. It was really tough, but... Potting the red isn't a problem. It's about as ambitious a lost turn shot as you could ever play. Squared up a lot of the cushion, that one. So Andy Williams with a fantastic chance to tie things up here. Three minutes left. Oh, you can't miss. Huge let off for Shane there. Oh, that's massive. You just saw in the background then as Andy was about to get down, you just saw a little sort of almost yawn of frustration from Shane and he jumps out of his chair with relief and this eight ball with two minutes 30 left will feel like it's match ball because he has the break in the next frame. Yeah, that was never missing. Never, ever missing. Yeah, he's catching that break, lovely. Yeah, really is catching it nice. He won't really mind this layout. It's not a particularly kind one. But call your extension, give yourself a minute and 40 to work and maybe just clear a few balls and all of a sudden there's no time left in the match for Andy to mount any kind of meaningful comeback. It's not that easy to clip this in and, and play with control here. This is quite thin. Yeah, I wasn't guaranteed to get a nice position on the next ball. So he does have options here. None that he'll particularly like. get the sense he's not terribly upset that Andy's coming to the table here. This is be a big clearance. He left him perfect angle to bust open his yellows though. And if Andy can get this away in less than one minute and 16 seconds, he does have the next break for a potential golden break attempt. But it was a tough yellow to take on. And that should ice the game. Yeah, Shane, look at him. He's already looking at the clock. Every shot will be on the beeps. Pop three balls, win the match. Yeah, far from a vintage display from Shane Thompson, but it hasn't needed to be. You'll know that if he is to come through tonight, he's likely to need a little bit more of the heavy hitting stuff. What he'll be pleased with, though, is the, the quality of the, the break that he's hitting. He knows how important that is. If he keeps hitting the break that well all night long, he'll be very dangerous. Yeah, a little bit of a wry smile, I think, from Shane there. I don't think the players particularly enjoy doing this. It's something that's sort of come into the game, really, in the last couple of years with the shot and match clock combination. But that will do it. Shane Thompson is over the line. Three frames to one over Andy Williams. And he keeps that cue ball spinning for a good measure as well. No chance of the shot then for Andy. Moving on to our second match of the night, Jimmy Croxton taking on Dylan Leary. And we're going to join it right at the start of the match. Jimmy has the opening break. Yeah, deserved to make a ball off that one. Struck those really nicely to Jimmy. He's maybe not got the kindest of leaves, though. Yeah, as you heard in his interview, he's been working very hard on his break. Feels like it's been the biggest weakness in his game. And a bit of a bounce off the pack there. Maybe shade low on the cue ball, maybe. Digging down on it. I know, being ultra critical, maybe. But there's power there. He certainly it looks like he's added more power to his game. And... He'd love an easier layout than this, first chance, but at least he has first chance. Yeah, this isn't very nice, so it looks like yellows are the shout. Yeah, yellows because of the yellow nearest the, the right centre pocket there. and He's saying it's easier to solve the yellow to the bottom right corner than it is that red just above the right centre. And 
Well, I was going to say it is, but he's going to play the negative option or the, the safe option. He was playing a loss of turn there, and that's a very loose shot from Jimmy. He was just playing the loss of turn. Cue ball welded to the bottom cushion, and he's got that one all wrong. Uh, I was a little bit surprised because he is one of the most aggressive players you, you will see. He normally feels he can clear from everywhere, but it was a good choice if he gets it right. But now that he hasn't, not the greatest. Yeah, you could probably, if you had to, if you had to pick a criticism of oh, Dylan straight off. Well, let's uh, let's not worry too much about criticising Jimmy Croxton. He's already back to the table. That speaking of loose shots, that is a sloppy one from Dylan Leary. That is for sure. I wonder if he thought he was missing it or catching it slightly thicker. It's a loose one, but it's still the same problem here for Jimmy. But I think this time he might look to be more aggressive. Leave the cue ball somewhere near where his hand is now, and then he can play a pot to the bottom left, cannon into the yellow, and hopefully catch it full ball and knock it onto the red, pot the red, and then the frame is there for him. No, he's not doing that. What's he got for us? I was going to say the oh, one... it must go. It must slide past the red. One thing you would say about Jimmy Croxton is often he's, he's almost aggressive to a fault at times. Yeah. And that was a very sort of un-Jimmy couple of shots to open this frame up. Yeah, that definitely doesn't go. Oh, he's looked at it multiple multiple times. I'm really shocked. The, the way the reason he played down the table like that is because he thinks this goes. It's the only thing I can think of. Because if he plays the loss of turn now, it's a surprise. Because it, it's he could have played the, the developing shot off either of those two yellows near the, the triangle line there. And he was perfect on... Well, on both of them, really. Probably the bottom one would have been better. That's clever, though. I like that a lot. Yeah, that's very clever. I like it a lot. So having been critical for Jimmy being too aggressive at times in his ultimate ball career, he's played two safety shots in the opening frame. And that's not just a safety shot. That's a very, very planned out safety as well. That's two, three shots in advance sort of safety play. Very, very nice. Decent Great. response from Dylan, though. Great response. A frame-winning response. You have to be honest. A frame-winning response unless Jimmy can come up with a brilliant shot here. Hard to see. And that's why he's tapping the table. Hard to see how Jimmy's going to get out of this and not leave Dylan a shot. Well, Jimmy's got to put a ball to the bottom right. Needs to nail it. He's not far off. He's not far off. What a response from the Joker. Brilliant. Frame on the line. And he has come up clutch. Look how close he had to get to that yellow. That really is brilliant. That one not so much. I think he can just about... If he can't get to the potting angle, it's not that hard to go cushion first. The only question if he has to go cushion first is does the eight ball go right centre? Oh. It was more of a swerve than I thought it was. Uh, after doing all the hard work. Yeah, I didn't realise he had to actually bend it to get to the cushion first, and that made a big difference. One good pot in the centre pocket here for Dylan Leary, and it should be his frame. A really intriguing opening frame between these two players. We said they'd be tight. Well, they've shown it in the first frame. This will hurt for whoever loses this. Dylan wants to be careful he doesn't leave this one short of the straight. He wants to get high on it, make it positional shot easy. Mm, probably is just a shade. So he may just have to accept what he's got, drop it in, take it bottom left. So not an absolute guarantee opening eight ball and what's been a a tricky opening frame for both. Yeah, 
but both can't wait to get this one out of the way. Never in doubt from lethal Dylan Leary, the familiar snarl comes to play. The highlight of his career, really. Could have happened. Well, it did happen to a fair few players. Fantastic cut break from Dylan. Gets everything flying in. And he's had to work back to his best in ultimate pool, and you have to do that in the most cutthroat of environments. And he's slowly starting to feel the sort of confidence, which is the biggest thing I find for a player, you know. If you feel like your game's there and you feel like you can win matches and can win tournaments. You certainly get that sense from him. Although he's not played the best of shots, has that just gone far enough? I don't think so, looking for an alternative. I think the plan was to get straight in on the yellow to left centre and then the yellow to the bottom left, the two together did go and then that opens up the other one. Had to play it from where he was, which made it harder. Also, it wasn't guaranteeing opening up the ball with that angle. What does Jimmy do? Played two safeties in the opening frame, which I wasn't expecting. And it, in the end, lost the frame. Not because of the safety shots, but lost the frame. Does he go all out here? Or does he look to try and keep it tight? All that straightened up on him. No, is that so far today? The couple of doubles that we've seen, usually these cushions have a little bit of a reputation for being quite slidey, but that doesn't seem to have been the case. So Dylan gets back in again. It's actually a judgment. When you, the fairly straight doubles tend to straighten up more than you think, and then the ones with a little bit more angle slide more than you think, and it's kind of understanding it and when it's going to happen. It takes a bit of getting used to out there. Obvious problem ball for Dylan. Could attack it now. Not that easy to get into from this angle, though. Yeah, so much so he's not that interested in taking it on for the time being. Oh, oh. yellow falls in. That will come back up. It's a rare one. Don't see that all that often. And uh, just a refresher of the rules. So should a uh, ball fall in independently, then it does just get replaced. You've got to pot all your balls. Yeah, my understanding of the rule now is if the ball at any point is stationary, which it obviously was here because it was stationary for plenty of shots, and then falls in, it will be replaced. Easy one for our referee, Scott Price, to deal with this time. That's a very cute little shot. The only thing with the shot that Dylan's just played is he wanted to play it off the red only and not the yellow. So he's just moved that yellow a shade further up the table. It does still go top left and clearly now goes left centre. This is a key shot though. And it's still not a good angle to get into it. Is he looking to see here if he can... Yeah, he's rerouting. I wonder, is he going to try and screw right back to the bottom cushion? So side cushion, bottom cushion. If he gets flat on the cushion, it makes the shot a little bit easier. But then there's still no guarantee to be on that ball when he cannons into it. No, he's going this way. So he's maybe playing off the yellow. So if you come off the yellow, caught a ball, pop the one over the pocket, and you want that yellow to come into play. Every chance he leaves himself a shot, but it won't be guaranteed to be an easy shot. And it's a tough shot he's got to play. It's a very tough shot he's got to play. Executed well, is he on it? Oh, I'm not sure. He is unlucky not to leave himself any shot. He's thinking if that just yellow finishes in the middle of the table, he will have a shot to the top right, is what he's thinking, worst way, and then he's backing himself to cue it in. To the finish there, okay, it was never he's guaranteed not even to be on. Long double. Yeah, it, it's a little bit unlucky. It's not, you know, ultra unlucky, but it is a little bit unlucky for me, that one. What we got for us, Dylan? He, he's a fantastic shot maker. He's going to need to be. 
Oh, it did go. It did, it did go. go queued in beautifully. Well, these camera angles. We'll never get used to it. I'm saying nothing on this one because I don't think this one goes, but <laughs> it might have to be the double. Maybe it does fly in. Just like that. <laughs> Dylan Leary with a fantastic finish. And I tell you what, those are the sorts of finishes that really do just hurt your opponent a little bit more. Dylan won the next with a reverse clearance to go 3-0 in front. Jimmy did respond with a quick reverse clearance of his own, but with no time left to continue the match, it was a 3-1 defeat for the Joker. On to our third match of the night. Jimmy will stay out there. This time he is taking on Andy Williams, and we're going to join it at the start of the match. You can see there again, he's got that little bounce on his break. I made a ball. He has made a ball this time, though. Watch the cue ball, though. That was a late one. I think Jimmy himself had even given up at this stage, but watch that yellow. Yeah, Andy's prepared to come up. <laughs> He's giving it the full teapot and then has to change his mind and actually focus on what he's got in front of him, which is actually a very, very good chance. His best result from the break tonight. Yeah, by a mile, and this is where Jimmy's night almost has to begin. That's a little bit short. Can he? Yeah, he's okay. He's okay. He's just gone far enough to be able to nip this back without worrying about those reds. Yeah, comfortable in the end. Lovely shot, that one from Jimmy. You'd love to have been able to play on the one down the cushion, off the one to bottom right two shots ago, but didn't quite have the angle to do it. But the cannon into it, knowing full well it would be on the one he's just played, works out just as well. So it'll really set him down on the night. He will be hoping so. Wasn't much to smile about for the Joker in the first match. Jimmy won the next two frames with clearances off the break as well. He's now 3 0 up, and Andy Williams has only played one shot. He has the break in frame four. Come close on a couple of occasions with Ultimate Pool so far. Oh, you feel for Andy Williams. You feel for him. Didn't hit this one as well as his first one, but it's exactly the same result. And yeah, it'd be a huge frustration for him. And nothing you can do if you don't get the opportunities, and he hasn't had anything in this match. In fact, he's played two shots, and that could be him. Although this is a trickier layout than the the first three that Jimmy's had, but it's still a layout that he'll fancy clearing. What helps is his big problem ball is the yellow that's glued to the red at the bottom right of the table. But there's so much around that that it shouldn't really be much of a problem. Yeah, it, it really isn't a problem, to be honest. If it's the next shot he gets now. Just float this one in. He probably has to say stay top side of the reds here to get the angle he wants. Little bounce, and that's not far off perfect. But this is where he backs his potting ability. He's not looking to get too close to this ball. He was just looking to leave a good angle, which he's done. And now this one, just to trace a running side, bump the other yellow out. It's just perfect. That was, I just couldn't see it going wrong now that he's found his rhythm. And he is the sort of player that when he gets going, Jimmy, he's, he's got that little bit of power game to his arsenal. He can run rack after rack. For all the great performances we've seen in the Champions League, I think this may be the first time we've seen a player only play two shots. Cool. Be four straight from the break and a 4 0 loss with two shots played. Tough one for Andy to take. Jimmy goes long, just to hold the cue ball. Very good. 
Brutal for Andy Williams, but Jimmy Croxton is up and running and he is not done yet in the Ultimate Pool Champions League. On to the key fourth match of the night. Dylan Leary taking on Shane Thompson, where both players won their opening matches. And it was Shane that won the opening frame of this one with a reverse clearance, and he has the break in frame two. That's the worst one he's hit tonight. And gets the result from it as well. Dry break. He probably deserved it the way he hit that one. Although, look at the number of balls that finish in the top half of the table. Yeah, I think the power is there, you know. Yeah, but look at the spots on the cue ball. He's come right across that one. Is there a, some sort of plant to start for Dylan? If not, not much on. He wants to be yellows, not reds. Dylan's basically saying to Shane, if you want to have a go at Reds, here you go. Yeah, all the best. Yeah, but he could have done with making more of a mess of the the red and the eight ball that are together there. Loss of turn. Shane just plays the loss of turn, doesn't give Dylan a huge amount to look at. Dylan's got to find a way to get this safe. Where on the table can you put this cue ball that doesn't leave a red on? And you have to hit a cushion after contact. I think he's left a yellow one here, left centre pocket. Mm, looking at that one, maybe not. Red just in the way. He also plays his own loss of turn. But again, played that with an eye of, I'm sort of just handing the table over a little bit. Yeah, that couldn't have gone much worse for him, really. I mean, he's opened up the eight ball. He's made the table easier for Shane, not harder. He was in trouble there, but that has just helped Shane out. And he has to play one half a positional shot here, really. If he hits the, the gap to be on the one to the top left, and the only thing really to guard against is leaving yourself straight on the one on the top cushion. But even if he left himself straight, he'd have a shot on the final red. Kills the cue ball in. That's that sort of control that we talked about. Very deft shot, that. Yeah, on the previous shot, he left himself just a fraction too far to the left, which meant he had to really kill that in, which meant he took away a little bit of the control, which left him too straight on this one. So he is looking at his, his secondary plan. But as I say, even finishing a little bit too straight, it wasn't really going to prove to be too much of a problem. And it, it hasn't been really. Perfect on this into the centre. Eight balls waiting. A break clearance got Dylan Leary on the board. He still trails though by two frames to one. Shane now has the break. I mean, it's caught everyone out at some point or other, but Dylan may be a little bit less comfortable than most. And Shane goes in off in the fourth frame here and opens the door for a 2-2 scoreline. If Dylan can get away here, he's got to play a good first shot, you feel. Because this table at the bottom half of the table is nice. The table at the top needs some figuring out. Yeah, there may be a lot of people at home watching going, oh, that yellow-red plant looks perfect. Go reds, but you can't do that. You have to pop the colour you're going for. So you can't play yellow onto red and go red. So that yellow-red at the top is a big problem. I wondered if he was tempted to leave himself straighter on and on that and screw into it to open it up. But if he did that, he wouldn't be guaranteed to be on the next ball. I think Maybe he was too far away from the pocket as well to consider playing off it. Oh, no, I think it is. I think that was his plan, was to come down the one by the yellow in the top half of the table to play off the red at the top, and that pops it open. But he didn't get on it nicely first time round. He's not on it this time. Well, he is on it, but he's not on it in an angle he wants to be. Well, he's not going to get there anyway. 
Same problem for Shane, though. Well, does he have an angle straight away? If he wants to be super brave, I can't imagine he'll take that on with the state of the balls at the moment. So Shane is thinking aggressive here. You can see the angle he's got. Yeah, he's going to pop this and play the cannon. A little bit of running side. Oh. No, he doesn't play the cannon, so this is more about the safety. I thought he was going to play the cannon to pop the red, but actually this is a better option because he can get the snooker at the same time as playing this one. Look at that, lovely. Yeah, nice. Very good. Yeah. Dylan's in all kinds of problems here. I saw him put Jimmy Croxton in a pretty horrible situation earlier on tonight. Jimmy found a way out. Can Dylan do exactly the same? That was a good hit, not towards the pocket, though. Good result, though. It's not a bad result, yeah. Yeah, he'll take that. He absolutely will take that. Okay, yes, it's a, still an opportunity here for, for Shane. That yellow will double. And he's actually already looking at the yellow in the middle of the table. As in, what's he going to do there? He's thinking, can I play it off the red? If he plays it off the red, does the red open up the yellow at the bottom? Probably not quite. Maybe just, I don't know. It's hard to tell without getting right behind it. I think if he's going to go, you deal with it, both of the ones at the bottom. Then go up the table. I think that's what he was thinking. But he, he wanted to be straight in on the double here, and he's not. He's a little bit too far down the table. Is he just about far enough up to hammer it in and straighten it? He's looking at other options, so it tells us probably not. He's going to try it, getting some screw on the ball as well. That straightens up even more. Shot. Very nice. And he wasn't worried about getting the cue on the top half of the table because he knows all he has to do is just drop this yellow in and leave himself a sight of well, pretty much full ball on the yellow in the middle of the table and he can play it off the red so he didn't have to be too precise there. Far. He's gone too far for his first plan, which was to be a little bit straighter in on it, but is, can he just see enough? Oh, he's down on it quickly. Very nice. Any further, and I think he was in a bit of trouble, but he's actually played it pretty lovely. This for 3-1. Part of the pocket, Shane Thompson is rolling and is one frame from two out of two. A reverse clearance in the next gave Shane Thompson a comfortable 4-1 victory and he takes control of the night. Dylan Leary will stay out in the arena. This time, though, he'll be taking on Andy Williams and needing a win to put the pressure on. On a high, it's safe to say it has not gone Andy's way so far this evening. And that is set to continue. I don't know how many ladders Andy walked under on his way to play his ball and snooker here in Newcastle under line, but he might want to change his route next time. He's had nothing go his way. Yeah, a couple of missed opportunities in the first match, but he played two shots in his second match, two dry breaks and lost 4-0. That is tough. And he starts this match with a dry break as well. He will not be feeling good about things right now. You know, Simon, if I was feeling cruel, I could... <laughs> I know where you're going with this. <laughs> I, I could ask you, how does that feel to, to do that? As, um, well, let's just say you've got previous with that sort of performance. 6-0 in four shots. I lost. Let's not go into it. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of not going into it, that's not 
quite the shot that Dylan was looking to play there. I think he was trying to open up that red. Just missed the line. Yeah, that's uh, disappointing for Dylan. I want to go into it as early as possible because he's going into it on that previous shot. It was almost guaranteed to be on a ball. The longer he leaves it, the less likely. And Dylan is still playing for something tonight. He still can qualify. He must win this match. He needs a little bit of help from one Jimmy Croxton in the final match of the evening against Shane Thompson. It's not out of the question. The good news for Dylan with that regard, needing a result to go your way, is that the person he's hoping on, as in Jimmy Croxton, absolutely needs the same result. And should that happen, it would be a three-way six-red shootout. It's the only way both Dylan and Jimmy can qualify tonight. Well, to be fair, Jimmy can do it with a two-way six-red oh, shootout. Oh, very, very true, yeah. yeah. If, but if Dylan loses, yeah, Dylan correct. can only qualify with the three-way six-red shootout, you're right. And, and I think that makes a difference because we have seen other weeks where the person that people are waiting for results on in that final match are playing somebody that's already been eliminated. And we've seen that go the wrong way sometimes. Some players can kind of free up and play some great stuff. And sometimes it's sort of almost your competitive juices flow away from you. So it's, it's a tough one. He's a good cannon. Just a little bit awkward. He wanted to be straighter in on that one so he could come back and play on the one he's finished next to. Now he's going to have to make a thin clip and slide through a gap. Yeah, he's going to play a very handy shot here as Dylan. And when he slides through that gap, he brings a middle pocket into play as well. Not guaranteed to go well, this one. Oh, I thought he could get a, a trace aside on that and go above the eight, but we couldn't. He was thinner than I thought, but that is the perfect result for him. He'd be very happy with the way that's finished. Yeah, but how do you like these ones? It's as good as you could have hoped from the last shot, but this still needs a serious pot. It's got one. Lovely job leap from Dylan Leary. 1-0. Dylan won the next two frames as well to go 3-0 in front. Three minutes 30 left. Dylan Leary 3-0 in front. Crunches another break and just look at these. Yeah, you'd love to keep getting these sort of layouts, wouldn't you? That has come out like a dream for the second frame on the drop for Dylan Leary. Red That's a lovely first shot as well. Played that with a lot of left-hand side just to bring the cue ball back down the left side of the table. Yeah, may well have wanted to get rid of the one at the top of the table and come down a little bit further than he wanted there, but the line was good and no real problems with leaving the one at the top. Just go back up for it. Once again, very hard to see how we can go wrong here. Dylan Leary rattles through the finish. He had to win, and he has won. Four frames to nil. On to our final match of the night. If Jimmy Croxton wins, then it will be a three-way six-red shootout. If Shane gets away with a draw or a win, then he will go through. And it was the joker, Jimmy Croxton, that won the opening frame with a reverse clearance, and he has the break in frame two. I have to say the standard of tonight is, is ramped up. The first two matches were a little bit scratchy. Since then, I think 11 of the next 14 frames are all clearances from the break. I stand it all of a sudden. Yeah, it's really levelled up. I think both these two, particularly in their second round matches, did that. Oh, you lucky boy, Jimmy. Is he going to make a ball too? Yeah. When you hit it as bad as that, of course you do. And he jumps the cue ball off the table. All eyes on the cue ball here. 
Oh. I've been saying all night long, he's, he's breaking with a bounce. <laughs> Shane's face in that back corner. Yeah, because it's not just the... It's not just the making a ball off the break. Look at the split as well. As soon as that ball stayed on the table, Shane gave it a bit of the shake of the head. And Jimmy, as I mentioned earlier, is the sort of player who can make your life very, very difficult. Yeah, the other thing to factor in for Shane as well is that he has a, a love-hate relationship with a six red shootout, as in a lot more hate than love. He's had, because he's been, been because he's been so good with ultimate ball, he's been involved in so many more of them than a lot of players have, and he's had some tough losses in them. Oh, oh Jimmy, what have you done? Oh, that's a terrible shot. Oh, he's already pulled a rabbit out of the hat tonight, Jimmy Croxon. He needs to do so again. He should make this yellow. It's just whether he can get out from there. Because even if he's on the one along the bottom cushion, that last yellow is going to be tough. And he can't take the one to the left centre now. You can't get on the one at the bottom. So he has to just drop this in and accept bad position on that last yellow. Well, two out of four to pull the rabbit. He's still got a long way to go. Don't think this sneaks into the right middle. Or does it? No, it will go long. Oh, it stays oh, wow. up. Jimmy was walking. He cannot believe that. I have to say, when he hit that, I thought it was wide. But then when he started walking around, he thought, well, that's in. Amazing. Yeah. So Shane is thinking, how can he deal with the yellow? Is there a loss of turn available? Have a quick look at it again. Shane has just played to safety while we look at this replay. Yeah, it threatened, didn't it? This is a risk from Shane. It's Jimmy's a big very risk. good at his angles, but the ball will slide on this angle here. And it has slid. I mean, look how much that slid. Yeah. And now Shane's going to play that delicate loss of turn. He could play the combination shot. He could play the red, yellow, and back himself to go. But I think he's more likely just to play. How oh, is he trying to. Get this one and then play the loss of turn. I quite like that, actually. I don't know. I'd like to be quite close to it because you've got to make sure you get the snooker on the eight ball. I think he's given himself an angle here, though, where he, he's pretty much guaranteed to have a decent <coughs> shot at this next one. Yeah, it, it, backing himself to make that one and getting to here and playing the shot from here. Just have to make sure you hide the, the eight ball with the red. Which he has very nicely. Yeah, that's lovely. I like that way around because that red was his only problem on the table, really. But if he gets cue ball in hand, then he can put himself on that ball and they've got the red over left centre and he can get, get away. I can understand why because he's sort of saying, look, I, I fancy Jimmy to get out of this snooker and, and therefore wherever he leaves the cue ball, I should be really good here for the finish. So you, you can see why he's done it and it makes sense now that he's made it. Can Jimmy find a way out? No, that was tough. That was really tough. And we have to say, it's a problem of his own making, really. The only reason Shane came to the table was because Jimmy missed. And the only reason Jimmy missed is because he ran out of position on what was a really routine clearance for his standards. Didn't look like coming either. He's been in fantastic shape for the last, what, five or six frames he's been at the table. Yeah, and being ultra critical about Jimmy Croxton, he, he'll probably look at back at this frame and go, oh, I can't believe I missed that ball. I thought I'd made it. If that goes in, I'll win the frame, which is true. But your point is valid. He had a routine finish there for 2-0, and he's made a bit of a mess of it, and it required a big pot to the top right corner to to get himself out of trouble, which he didn't make on this occasion. And you can't always make those recovery pots. You don't care how good you are. So if he looks back on this frame, he should look back on the, the positional mistake rather than the missed pot. And I question how much Jimmy does that because he backs his potting so much. I mean, 
Shane Thompson is a prime example. He's won his four titles, certainly the first three in the opening season through just exceptional cue ball control. Number of finishes he made without playing any sort of tough pot. Mark of a good player. Last, last few shots of a visit. You feel like, oh, I could make these. Yeah, he just doesn't leave himself tough pots. Artistry is all in what he does with the cue ball and the route that he picks. It's very, very difficult to do. Let's have another look at the miss from Jimmy Croxton. It was a very tough shot. And he almost got out of dodge. How close this is. Almost threatens to drop over the lip of the pocket. Just rests up. The next two frames were shared with reverse clearances. Shane Thompson now has the break in frame five. Three minutes 45 left on the match clock. Eight ball in motion. Has he made a ball? No. No, he has not. Yeah, 3.45. Keep an eye on that match clock. It's now massive. The odds of a six red shootout have just shortened here. These reds look to just begging to be cleared up and Jimmy would have the break in the next frame with the clock almost gone if he makes these. Just got to hold his hold himself steady. For me, try and get on that one nearest the bottom left-hand corner as early as you can. Question, what are you going to play on afterwards? Well, he has his extension. Oh, that's not the best shot. He played on it there. He just got way too much side on that one. 15 second shot clock now very much in play as well. So very much because it's going to have a big impact on this frame, you feel. Jimmy misses. Can Shane hit? The yellows aren't good at the bottom left-hand side of the table, but he'll be thrilled to come to the table. He would have feared the worst when he saw that layout. Oh, I love that. Has it just feathered it on? I think it has. the angle any good to knock the other one out or is it a glancing blow on the one to the left because if it's a glancing blow it won't knock it on oh, he's hitting it thick enough shade under two minutes remaining oh that's such a good shot his next one's tough though yeah just stuck on this ball. I think it went to the bottom corner. I think he could have done with sliding by it. Two shots ago, he was playing on the one to right centre. Didn't land on it, and that's why he's is where he is here. So he plays the. He was trying to play the combination there, but it was more of a loss of turn shot, leaving a safe white. But he he has left one up the table. Well, now the next 90 seconds are massive. This may well be our final frame of the evening. Jimmy backs his potting. He needs it here. He needed it. He may well still get one more chance, though. Shane Thompson needs to use all the clock here. Felt like he was almost waiting for the beeps there, and they didn't quite appear, so just struck it anyway. And he's left himself a poor angle, I think. He's too straight here. He's got to really force this to get across to the right hand, sort of almost on the break line. Yeah, he just got enough. Just got enough. Don't know whether that eight ball slides into the top right. If it doesn't, then he's got a real problem. And it's about using as much of the clock up as he can in the next two shots. He could have used a little bit more. Will it cost him? Still don't know if it goes. We're about to find out. He's eyed up. He's eyed it up. It does go. It squeezes in. This is effectively for the win. It does indeed go. Massive frame won by Shane Thompson. He's all but everything into the, the next round. Yeah, you're absolutely spot on. 
<laughs> Jimmy could have a pretty good speed pull attempt here, but that's why 18 seconds is pretty impossible. But he gave it a decent go, nevertheless. Shane Thompson is through to the next stage of the Ultimate Pool Champions League. As the joker shows that he wouldn't have needed too much longer. It's the four-time Pro Series champion Shane Thompson that books his place in the second stage of the Champions League. You can watch this whole night back on Ultimate Pool TV, or if you are looking forward to next week, then this is your lineup. Lee Anderson and Luke Sanjis are new professionals. Christophe Lambert made the semi finals of this event last year. And Sean Chipperfield, the former world champion and former Pairs Cup champion, completes a very good looking lineup in Group 10 of the Ultimate Pool Champions League.